effect is not nullified or you engage in certain activities that make the effect bring you into a different kind of effect. With my own example, the spirituality is my way of life, but I have to make my living also. For making the living, I market food items in the country. That is a business. I have to take into account all the business that is necessary. For instance, if I have to come here, we have to study <coughs> the two aspects. What is my revenue and what is my cost of operation? In business, we have to take into account. You have to deliver something for $10 and your cost of operation is $20. You cannot do that. So all those econom economics has to be taken into account. This is the way of my life, to make my living. But even during that state, the inner thread is not lost. I am doing this for my living. So sometimes it happens I am driving to deliver something. All of a sudden, I pull the car on the shoulder, write something and post it on the social network and drive back again. Whosoever I meet, I give them what I have. Business is necessary for my living even when I am dealing with the business people. So when they have to deal with me, they follow the language that I use. It happened, two examples happened. I was in a supermarket. I needed a bread, a particular kind of a bread. So I asked in the bakery, I said, uh, do you have this coconut bake bread? He said, yes. I asked where it is. She said it is on this shelf there. I picked up the bread to confirm from the person, is this correct one? She said in a high tone, yes, sir. I took the bread. My purpose is served. Put it in my cart. I started driving. I realized that somebody is trying to overtake me. A lady was overtaking. I gave her the chance. And as she passed me, she said, that woman was very harsh. She should have not spoken in that way. I am in business. I said, how does it matter to me? It does not matter to me. She used high tone or whatsoever language she did that is her way of life. It has nothing to do with me. If she uses an obscene language, she has used it. It has no effect on me. And I am not interested in whether she is, maybe that is the way she speaks. The lady said, wait a minute. Are you Tausha Buddha? He said that, I had been following you. She is from Trinidad, but she never met me. Only that person can speak like that. Now, what did I do? I am in a business place. The bliss or the effect that I have experienced, I am sharing it and carrying those things with me all the time. When you earn money, you carry the money in your pocket to share it when you go to the church or somewhere else. So whatsoever you have earned in your life, which is your treasure, you carry it all the time wherever you go. Another example happened at Miami airport. I am waiting for my flight to DC. Waiting. I just sit down and waited. 
a lady, elderly lady was sitting in front of me and she is watching, watching. Something she would have asked or I don't know how it happened. She slip out of her seat, come down, sit down by my feet Sir, I was trying to figure out because I saw your image on the social network and I was hoping one day I meet you. Probably I would have spoken something to her. So when you have experienced something, it becomes way of your life. My state, I am not retaining a high state of awareness that time. But the effect of that filters through your very presence. That becomes your presence. The words you, that you speak, the way you walk, the way you interact with the people, whatever is your experience, whatever you have gained through meditation, filters through that. And that is more important. Otherwise, if you want to retain that intense state, you will get bored after uh, two, three days, I can assure you. So it is important, let it be part of your being. When your breath comes out, when your words flow out of your mouth, when you look at someone, your eyes become responsive to that. The, when meditation is happened and attains fruition, your eyes becomes fixed. There is no wavering in the eyes. Eyes do not blink like normally. <coughs> blinking of the eye is directly related to floating of thoughts within, within the mind. The frequency of the thought blink affects or makes the eyes blink. When there is no thoughts floating in the mind, what happens? Ultimately, there is no blinking of the eyes. I have no reason to blink. And that is where the eyes become so intense in carrying the energy. Wherever the eyes look into, it creates a penetrating vision and the moment that happens, and that is the way the masters use to initiate or to commune with the disciples through the eyes. That is the only window through which they connect to the other seekers, establish a communion with them. So. It, what is very important, firstly, you have to see that terminals, you are always connected to the, if your battery is running down, you have to get connected to the battery charger. And who is the battery charger? The master is the one who keeps your battery charge always. For that very reason, beyond time and space, I have made myself presence available in the form of post that goes on in each post. If you try to read, it will create an effect on you. And if you keep on reading those posts again and again, it will start changing creating the groups in your consciousness. And when it creates groups in the consciousness, the whole gestalt begins to change. In 1994, I had a talk where during a, a program, I had spoken. So one of my friends who had no connection with me at a spiritual level, but he was very good friend business-wise and so, so he attended that funeral service. So in that I spoke, it was 1994. I spoke, there is nothing lower and nothing higher. 
This is the concept that exists in the human mind. You can look at the wall in front of you and tell me if you see anything lower or higher. What is the criteria that will determine that from here the higher begins and from here the lower begins? No way you can do. What is the relationship between higher and lower? Lower is the beginning of higher. Lower is the beginning of higher and higher is the end of lower. When lower attains its fruition, reaches its culmination, that becomes higher. And sometimes without the lower, the higher cannot come into existence. And higher is meaningless if lower is not there, higher cannot come into existence if lower is not there. Lower gives it a beginning. And slowly and slowly, when we, one block by block, when you start putting up the blocks, it starts gaining the height. And when the wall reaches a certain height, you stop it and that is the higher of that wall that is needed for a specific purpose. Yes, when it comes to certain practical aspect, you want to hang your pictures, you need to have the picture hanged at a certain eye level. So when person is sitting or is standing, can have a look at the picture that is hanging on the wall. Otherwise, the concept of lower and higher does not exist. It is only in the human mind. Now, any time he meets me, he will just remember that and keep on repeating that. So what had happened? This particular word, particular phrase, got so much ingrained into his consciousness that he cannot forget it. And that keeps the connection with me. Although he is not connected spiritually, but somewhere or the other, maybe, not today, not tomorrow, maybe in some distant future, that seed will sprout and will attain to fruition. That's why I keep on saying in the barren soils of thy inner sanctum, how do I use the manure of compassion? Then one day seed of awakening I sow, with the rain of thy infinite bliss, the seed shall sprout one day. And then reckoning shall reap the fruits at the dawn of new awakening. A new dawn has come in. So whatever words, these words are not mere words. They are compositions. They are the, the carriers, just like the air that you breathe in, is simply a carrier that brings with it That will continue to create the groups into you and you will never be able to forget that. This is the way that you can live your life moment to moment. 
So these words that I am speaking, along with this word, a presence comes, an understanding comes, an energy force comes in, and it is that force which works. The words are mere on the surface, but deep down something else works. When Swami Vivekananda was in the Parliament of Religions, mm -hmm. he had spoken. And after that, Sister Nivedita, she asked Swamiji when he was speaking in Parliament of Religions, it appeared as if the rays of light were emitting out of your being. If you had asked us to plunge into the ocean, we would have done it. What was the reason behind it? He said, when I was speaking in the parliament of religions, the words were mine, the voice was mine, sometimes even the punctuation was mine, but the force behind my voice was that, was of that haggard man. It is the force that I have been able to encompass into my being. Each time when I interact, it becomes a presence and it flows out and reaches you. So words are reflective of that. When you read those posts, so it continues to create the groups in your consciousness, the more groups are there, it would be very difficult for you to interact in any other way. When I used to have the radio program live, so many people will listen, <coughs> whosoever will meet me, at least he has one or the other sentence that has become a part of his life and he will keep on repeating to me that he have heard. Now all this is there to retain that and connectivity so that your battery never gets discharged. My children, they are in a different zone. So right now they are in their own way of life. So it happened that my daughter, she made some dish. As usual, everybody does it. The first thing is they post it on the Facebook. <laughs> so she did it. And she wrote a description underneath. In the description, she wrote that how she did it, a bed of lettuce and on that, this and that, and so, and finally this. So my niece, my sister's daughter, she said, uh, Sargam, you are sounding like Tao Sho Buddha. Now this is a conversation between the two which I picked up from Facebook, their page. You are sounding like Tao Sho Buddha. So my daughter says, Sheetal, you have forgotten that if daddy was to write this, he would use two words. Lovingly and meditatively must be there in his, in his expression. Anything he has to tell me, he will say, do it lovingly, do it meditatively. Now, whether she listens to me or not, but these two words have become a part of her. So what will happen that their, her battery will never get discharged. Even these two words, constant remembrance that the whatsoever you do, you do it lovingly, and you do meditatively, it will not discharge your battery. You are connected to that source, that light, that is already connected, so you don't have to make much of an effort. You just carry your battery to the electrician, he has a device, he will connect it to the battery charger and your battery gets charged all the time. 
So I have made myself available. Anyone who wants to speak to me can send a message, have a question, have a problem, or whatsoever it is, I will respond. And that way you are connected and the nothing the batteries remain charged and the effect is like when you take a heavy dose of alcohol its effect is there intense but slowly and slowly it gets less but do you think you can retain the the intense effect of that heavy dose of alcohol that you have taken you cannot remain in that state because you are part of the world. You have to be in the world, but be not let the world be within you. I have to be part of my living. I have to interact with the people who have nothing to do with meditation. They are purely business people. But in that, I will communicate my things. You may not be interested in my silence that surrounds me. So for that, I speak. My words, you will be attracted to. They may interest you. And if even those do not interest you, certainly one thing you cannot deny. When I cook food, you cannot deny that. <laughs> So, there is no way that you can escape me. Can, no way that you can avoid me. And that is where the overall, the, in the past, masters never focused on food. But this is one of the very important aspects. And I have not shunned away from speaking on any topic doesn't matter what topic is. You can bring your grace into it and make it understood by the people. So there is no problem whatsoever. Consciousness is the core of human existence. Buddha was, Buddha was mindful and he taught his monks to be mindful of small things. Someone asked Buddha, are you a philosopher or thinker or what you are? He said, I am a physician. Physician? What do you do? I eat, I drink, I walk, I talk. So, what is so spiritual about it? I also walk. He said, are you aware of your walking? When your hand raises, are you aware of it? You have a platter of food in front of you, a delicious food. And it is this food that can go through your esophagus into your stomach and will become energy into you. But what are you thinking about it? You have a morsel in your mouth, next one in the hand, and eyes are fixed what is on the platter. <laughs> this is how we eat our food. We do not allow the gap, a morsel has gone into mouth, let it reach the esophagus. No, we are in such a hurry <laughs> that we must have the next one in our hand ready to go into the stomach into the mouth as soon as that makes the room and we keep on talking about we go to the restaurant we have the food in front of us and what we talk just go back into your rewind your video and see what happens you may be thinking of when you went to the restaurant last time and what you ate there. What kind of food was available there. But that food has not 
is finished. Now whatsoever is in front of your eyes and in front on the dining table, that is the one that can give you the satiation. And when you have eaten that food unconsciously and you go next time to the restaurant, then you will remember these dishes and you will talk about these dishes. Is this the way we want to live as a meditator, as a spiritual life? No, we are aware moment to moment when something is happening in that very moment. We do not miss that moment. When you start reliving, living those moments, aware, with full of awareness, mindful, then you do not have to ask that question, how to retain it. Living everything moment to moment when you are raising your hand, when you take out your glasses and you rest it somewhere, don't you look for those glasses and ask someone else, where did I put, where, where is my glasses? Because you have placed them unconsciously. Many times it happens, you put your car keys and you are looking for car keys and you are asking everyone, where is the car key? Someone asked me, and they, now a meditator becomes a non-presence. They realize that this man is useless, you cannot ask him anything, he does not answer properly, and it is a waste of time asking him. Someone asked me, do you know where I put my glasses? I said, yes, I know. He said, but why you could not tell me? I had been looking for my glasses for so long and you could not tell me? What kind of, what kind of person you were and how it was that you could not tell me where I am looking for my glasses and you know where my glasses are, you could not tell me? I said, yes. He said, where it is? I said, exactly the same place where you put it. <laughs> Is that the answer? How am I to know where you placed it? If you are aware why, why you, when you are placing your glasses, you need not ask anyone. And if you can remember that you are living a life of meditation, the meditation translated into practical day-to-day -day life. It's not that one hour you meditate in the morning and that will be enough. No, it is a moment to moment. Every moment is a moment of awareness and when you live that moment, it is one moment unfolds into the other. The awareness that you have lived in that moment goes into the other moment and it creates a web. It creates an ambience, it creates a presence around you and you are floating in that ocean of bliss, ocean of joy. Doesn't matter what you are doing. You may be walking, you may, be, may not have the money in you but you have the greatest treasure, of, treasure in you. And when you are mindful of small things, this is the methodology to attain to crystallization of consciousness. When you are mindful of small things, you grow into consciousness moment to moment with each situation as it comes in. As you grow into consciousness, the moments of unconsciousness starts getting less and less and they begin to get less and less and then one day the season of spring comes and the consciousness flowers. In the beginning the thoughts remain floating on the inner sky, thoughts 
flow flowed profusely without any break continues to do and when consciousness one day becomes without the thought then it becomes your resting is inner space that is your awareness that you carry with you moment to moment we are trained to do things in a particular way we are trained for doing we are doers not being and doing brings and it strengthens our ego doing strengthens our ego and ego is the shadow of action and being strengthens consciousness from doing you have to be being yes i have to do action but i am doing in a atmosphere of being i am aware when we are talk a simple example is i am talking to you you are listening to me am i talking talking is happening through me it is not an act it is an act of being the presence is there presence is overflowing it is a way to commune with you all talk has to be there and what happens there when you are talking your attention goes on to the other and you lose connection with yourself so you do not know what will be the effect of the words that are coming out of you on the other now my arrow is double faced it faces you as well as it faces my center also it is connected to my center and from there it is being the words are emanating it reaching to you like an arrow and it strikes the source the words are very simple there is nothing technical no philosophy no scriptural injunctions simple ordinary words but these have an indelible impression that will continue to echo into your being like a dissolving notes of a enchanting melody when music is played music disappears but there remains an in 